Fish are important because they help maintain the health of marine ecosystems and provide support to other marine life. They are an important part of the food web because they are predators to smaller organisms and prey to marine mammals and seabirds globally. They also support humans. About 80 million tons of fish are harvested annually. This volume is enough to feed all Filipinos with their annual fish consumption for 20 years. And there are currently about 60 million people working in the fishing industry globally. But on a global scale, 33% of fisheries are overfished, meaning too many fish are being harvested. This may cause fish populations to become depleted and not able to recover. 67% are fully exploited, meaning additional fishing effort could lead to the fisheries collapse. Only 10% have room to grow, with just 10% of the fisheries having a room to grow. We might experience a global fishing crisis.
Human activities, such as burning fossil fuels, are warming Earth's climate. The climate crisis has widespread ramifications. Ecologists are worried that many species will become extinct because they might not be able to adapt to a climate change that's faster than most naturally occurring ones. It's possible that some plants and animals could adapt by shifting their habitats towards Earth's poles or towards higher elevations to avoid the heat. Since ecosystems are varied and complex, ecologists can only find out by studying many specific cases. A team of American ecologists explored this possibility for a species of hummingbirds native to North America's west coast, called Anna's hummingbird. The researchers published their findings in 2022. Anna's hummingbirds live in California's lowlands, but migrate upslope into the cooler mountains during the summer. If climate warming continues, the team hypothesized, the birds might adapt by migrating farther up. To test whether this was really possible, the researchers studied the effects of relocating a group of Anna's hummingbirds to a higher altitude. They captured the birds from across their normal range in the Sierra Nevada and moved them to a research station near a mountain peak, 4,000 feet higher than the birds normally venture. They found that the hummingbirds had big difficulties adapting to the lower air pressure and oxygen levels, which caused a drop in their metabolic rate and flight efficiency. Although the researchers still want to study,
Plastic is lightweight, malleable, durable, but it has also become so widespread that it's ending up in a lot of unwanted places, including our own bodies. That's according to a new study, which found that humans are consuming a shocking amount of so-called microplastics. Microplastics. The kind of current working definition. Plastic less than 5 millimeters. So people commonly equate that to something like a grain of rice or a sesame seed and down in terms of size class. I will say that most of the microplastic that people are interacting with are quite a bit smaller than the sesame seed size, which I think always kinds of shocks people when we start talking about the numbers because they kind of can't see a lot of these things, at least with the naked eye. Kieran Cox a PhD candidate in marine biology at the University of Victoria in Canada and one of the authors of the study, which is in the journal Environmental Science and Technology. Well, Alex, the National Association of Realtors is at least putting the champagne on ice. The industry group says the slight rise in sales for previously owned homes shows the housing market is finally stabilizing, which is the first sign of a recovery. Now, that of course is an interpretation of the numbers. Alex, and one that's coming from an organization known for being somewhat of a cheerleader for the housing market, since its members are made up of realtors who've been losing a lot of money in the slump. Now, for a more sober view, I talked to Wellesley housing economist Carl Case, and he says the slight uptick in sales hardly offsets the fact that numbers are down 20% from the year before. Two decades ago, Kashmiri houseboat owners rubbed their hands every spring at the prospect of the annual influx of tourists. From May to October, the hyacinth choked waters of Dal Lake saw flotillas of vividly painted shikaras carrying Indian families, boho westerners, young travelers, and wide eyed Japanese. Carpet sellers honed their skills, as did purveyors of anything remotely embroidered, while the houseboats, initiated by the British Raj, provided unusual accommodation. Then, in 1989, separatist and Islamist militancy attacked and everything changed. Hindus and countless Kashmiri business people bolted, at least 35,000 people were killed in a decade, the lake stagnated, and the houseboats rotted. Any foreigners venturing their risk their lives proved in 1995 when five young Europeans were kidnapped and murdered. Why do we need more entrepreneurs right now? The entrepreneurs who create and run our businesses, who play by the rules, are in fact critical to our success as a nation. We need them especially today. Business, not government, will end this recession. Government must help by creating fair rules, sound, monetary policy, and by protecting our fellow citizens in periods when they are jobless. We have to make way for the new entrepreneurial firms that will push us to frontiers of innovation. Based on the strength of Earth's gravity and the density and strength of rock, in principle you could make a single conical mountain that stretched between New York and Chicago and soared over 45 kilometers. That's twice the size of Olympus Mons and definitely dwarfs Everest. 
However, there are a couple of reasons why we can't actually have that humongous of a mountain on Earth. For one, Earth's crust is made up of continental plates that essentially float in the semi-solid rock of the mantle below. If you add more weight above the surface, they sink lower into the Earth's hot interior, and when they sink far enough, they soften and basically melt. For our conical mountain, that gives a new height limit of just 15 kilometers. As well, the powerful collision of two tectonic plates, which creates mountains in the first place, also fractures and cracks the rock, weakening its structure and exposing it to erosion. Over millions of years, freeze-thaw cycles pry at these cracks, while winds claw at the slopes and streams and glaciers carve deep valleys into the mountainside, all weakening the mountain's support. This can end badly. For example, 3,764 meters tall Aoraki Mount Cook in New Zealand had its top fall off one night in 1991, trimming it down to a 3,754 meters mountain. Given all the factors that conspire to limit the height of mountains, for example sinking into the Earth's mantle, fractures, and erosion, I wouldn't bet on our tallest mountains getting too much taller than they already are. There's growing alarm over plunging insect populations with climate change, habitat destruction and pesticides all thought to play a role. But now, scientists say there's another culprit, artificial streetlights. Researchers from the charity Butterfly Conservation counted caterpillars at the sides of brightly lit roads. Compared with similar stretches of unlit roads, caterpillar numbers were reduced by half, suggesting streetlights can affect the abundance of insects, at least on a local scale. The scientists say with insects in trouble, we should be doing all we can to reduce negative influences. But there are practical solutions such as dimming street lights in the early hours, installing motion sensors, or using color filters to modify the light. If Wikipedia had been around a couple hundred years ago we probably would have had an article that says that the sun revolves around the earth because that was what we understood to be true. We no longer understand that to be true thanks to advances in science and physics, but if tomorrow we were to wake up and learn that in fact time being relative really does upend the way that we think about the world Wikipedia would have to evolve in order to describe that. So we're not really in the business of truth or facts, we're in the business of what is known, and what has been determined through consensus scientific consensus or otherwise. And I think that that actually provides some clarity on how to understand what information you're looking at. One thing that I think is really unique about Wikipedia is there's only one version for the whole public there's no feed that's curated for you or for me. relationship between the fault lines in the Earth's crust and an earthquake. This dislocation of the rock occurs from the Earth's surface, some kilometers to several hundred kilometers vertically down to the crust. The earthquake's focus is called the epicenter which is vertically beneath the interior of the Earth's crust and the energy releases and transfers through epicenter. The faults are the fracture on the Earth's crust. The position of the epicenters can be identified by the faults map, looking down from the center of the Earth. It will result in a seismic wave which is decreased as it moved away from the epicenter.
The impact on young Australians who are interested in buying a home of their own has been very significant. Australia's housing affordability now shapes the typical housing cycle or housing career as some people call it. Most Australians in the normal course of events are people who move through the housing cycle in a way that matches the stages of life that they're at. So, they move out of the family home in their late teens or early 20s as they gain their independence from their families, then they rent to save for a home they can afford as either a group or maybe a couple. And maybe they can upgrade it when they have a family in their middle age, they are more than likely to have paid off their mortgage. And that means they have housing security in their old age. That's no longer the typical housing cycle for Australians, young people generally live at home for much longer than they once did. They generally rent for longer and they're more likely to be saddled with a mortgage not just into their middle age but more often than not into their retirement as well. In fact, in 2006, 65,000 retiree households were still paying off the mortgage. Affordable rent is also an elusive right around Australia. We have very low rental vacancies, we see high turnover as landlords want to maximize their profits in a tight market, and we see less long-term or lifelong rental, as we see in other countries and other economies. At the top, you would have a king. Now the king would rule over a kingdom. Now, this is not so easy to govern especially during the Middle Ages. And the king might owe many people, things especially people who helped the king come to power, helped him dispose of the previous king or to conquer this land. And so in exchange for that and to help govern, he might grant land or feasts to other people. And the key currency in the Middle Ages under the feudal system island. And land in exchange for loyalty and service. So this whole thing is a kingdom. Now right over here, this is a duchy. And a duchy will be controlled by a duke. I guess I didn't call it ducky because that just doesn't sound as serious. So the king might grant a duchy, a duchy to a duke and in exchange, the duke would provide loyalty pledge their fealty. If the kingdom is threatened, the duke will fight alongside. The king would provide their own troops if the king wants to go conquer other territories, same thing, and also provide the king with taxes which might be in the form of coinage depending on what time and region we are in the Middle Ages or it might be in the form of a percentage of the agricultural production from this duchy. It might not be possible to solve the problem easily. All evaluation forms will be reviewed by the university personnel. Art is an expression of creative skill and imagination. There are many branches of medical studies.